Hi friends, welcome back to my channel Testing Mini Bytes. I am your friend Amudan Shaktivel, and in this video, we are going to continue the, our uh, code refactoring series, right? In our last video, we have been working with our uh, property files. You know, we learned uh, you know how to use an interface to set up the skeleton. We also understood how we can uh, use open pro closed principle in in order to use uh, you know the property files, you know, or your configuration files. Suppose you want to change your configuration file from properties to yaml in at the later point of time if you use an opal closed principle you know you don't have to touch the existing code so that's, that's the benefit out of it right so for that we created a uh, framework config again uh, it's always good uh, that you can uh, you know i normally prefer annotating interfaces with i so that it's more easy for me to understand yeah and uh, whatever the config that you're going to create in future they all going to implement this for example, in our case, we are using owner. So, so we have actually created an interface. So in an interface extends the iframe config. Suppose in your case, if you're using JSON, you can create JSON config that implementing this iframe config. Again, this, this is just a marker interface. Again, if you don't understand what I'm speaking here, you may have to go back, revise, uh, you know, watch the previous video and revise all these topics, right? Good, we are done with this. Now we need to access this from our test methods or your page methods, right? So for that, we need to expose our service layer, like how we do normally. And uh, yeah, that's how we have built a random service layer and then screenshot service layer as well, right? So in the same way, in the utils, I go here and then I create a class called as, uh, sorry, the package called as properties. And inside properties, I want to create a class called as uh, config service, right? So we don't know whether this is going to be property all the time. So we are not sure about it. So anything, you know, even if it is YAML, JSON or whatever, at the end, it's all going to be config. So we need a config service uh, that basically uh, feed us all this information, right? And here I could, uh, you know, this is the runner class uh, that we have actually used. So we need to create an, uh, you know, instance for property reader and then get config and whatever the value you want, right? So now, uh, let's go to this config service and we'll create a, you know, a public. So public and uh, I want to get, you know, static. I want to get username, maybe uh, get user names, whatever. Okay. Or user email in our case. Right? So in this case, um, I need basically the, uh, you know, I need to return new uh, property property reader right and dot get config dot a user right so this is how we normally do right but if i if i try to create for another password okay let's create for get password whatever you want to get something from your configuration file and for that you can again use password Right, this is fine. But if you notice, if there are hundred again, you need to create a new property reader instance every time. So what if there is a way that you know you create it just once and then use it across? Okay, that's that's something that you can use. Maybe you can use a singleton, uh, you know, kind of approach, or you can you know you can initialize only once and then you can use it later. Yeah, or you can use dependency injection. Uh, you know, you don't have to really use Spring Boot. Maybe you can try with uh, Google Juice or something. Yeah, but we'll we'll come to that later. But for now, just understand, uh, we just need a new property reader. Again, I don't want to repeat this every place. So what you can do, we can basically create a private method that is not accessible to anyone um, that basically returns you, uh, you know, let's, let's keep it as void for now and get uh, get config, okay? And here I can basically return a new property reader, new property reader dot get config, right? So at the end, I think it will return the property, yeah, property config. And instead of writing whole stuff like this, you can basically use get config, the private method, and then you can use it, right? So yeah, even now, every time you call, you know it basically returns you this but you know you can create a new variable here okay and then uh, if that is not initialized then only you can return it so that you know you don't call you know you don't create multiple instances because you don't need them right so you don't why do you, why do you need an instance so we don't need the instance maybe if you use a factory 
it, it's already been taken care uh, but here you, you know you can uh, you can basically assign this okay i'm introducing a new local variable and uh, maybe let's keep it as uh, uh, null and uh, if if you know objects dot non null if it is okay is null if it is null that is config is null um then only i want to do something what i want to do is basically i want to do config equal to new property config new property reader dot get config right so yeah so this is fine now and uh, i want to return config yeah this is how it is and it's still throwing something so what is still in condition object is always true yeah um yeah because this is a local variable so yeah we can create it outside like this and we can just say it again. and you can also shield it with private concept. yeah so instead of you know uh, doing all these things you can also try one more thing that is using a static block you can you can initialize this once so you know it won't it, it won't be you know we are sure that it will be called only one so you don't have to write a lot of complex logic like this so i can go for a static block and then i can assign config equal to new property reader dot kit config right that's it so now it's still throwing it's assigned but never accessed yeah we'll access it don't worry so instead of this you can just mention config dot config dot password yeah so now this becomes more readable more understandable yeah but if you notice this is basically uh, you know uh, doing a lot of things suppose if there are more values that you need to add you have to you know call this but this is the most convenient way i could reckon because you know if you want to if you don't want to return user email okay uh, you want to return some default values then you can you know basically you know do all these operations here that's the you know advantage of using service layer you can wrap all your business logic inside this that's what uh, you know the service layer is meant for so yeah this is how you can use it right and uh, yeah apart from that um, now the problem is in the business layer tomorrow you want to use something else okay instead of new property reader you want to use json so i at the time i have to come and change this here okay so maybe instead of this you can create a configuration manager which manages all that see now this class is doing two things one it is it is returning all these things apart from that it is also managing this okay it's also creating the instance all that stuff okay so it's doing two things okay why do you want to you know overload methods okay overload a class you cannot do a lot of things okay so as a good practice what you can do you can also create a new uh, configuration manager which can basically do the task of uh, you know returning you this so here you can create public static uh, uh, property config uh, now get config and here you can basically return return new property reader you can basically use a you know uh, something like a factory pattern and all the stuff but for now we don't need this okay i am simply using get config okay so now this logic is moved here so this class will manage you know if, if you want to change it to property reader you can do this okay you can change it but again the good thing is you know this is not really good approach maybe you can do dependency injection and then you can take this new property reader so that's the better better approach but we are not yet there i haven't covered that anyway anyways so you know maybe for now we'll keep it like this and then going forward we may think about doing that later right and uh, now we can go there uh, instead of directly calling this okay uh, you can basically do or instead of doing all that okay i can basically you know remove all these things i don't need them okay uh, configuration manager okay 
dot git config right yeah so now i can copy this can paste see guys you might be wondering what this guy is doing okay he's doing a lot of things you know changing unnecessarily the same stuff but this is how it is guys okay first i'll write a code i'll check whether this is you know you know it's it's satisfying all my requirements okay then i'll do try to improvise and then you know try to use a lot of uh, clean code practices and then put them into place it's not like you directly go and write a code if someone doing that they might be wrong or they might be a you know very big expert i never done this so it's it's how it is so i can remove all these things you can also do a uh, static import so that uh, my code looks much better now okay so that's how it is so your configuration manager will take care of all these things again instead of this we we'll see how we can do dependency injection uh, to you know because all this class needs is an is an instance of your property reader or or whatever right so if you if you can inject that into this class you know maybe we can we can remove this logic so we'll see about that either at the later point of time but for now this looks fine now we can go to our uh, you know uh, test base test and we'll try to optimize this so instead of doing all this nonsense all the stuff here right uh, yeah it will anyways throw error so we are using this in multiple places so the base url will not be there anymore so all these places you have to use a, a proper you know config service right so config service dot uh, basically we didn't create it for base url so i can go there and i can add one more method and you can use a singleton pattern instead of static methods it's up to you to find you know whatever the way you want to do uh, get a base url okay and here you can basically use base url. okay and uh, let's go there and config service or get base url. so if you want username config service dot you know get user email config service dot get password again you don't have to put all these things you know you know in, in the base class it's up to you but you know um, i feel like you know you can directly in the get method you can directly you know um, call these things in a, in, a, in your from your page layers so that your test looks much clean but for now we want to run this so we ha don't have any other way so we will i will go with this okay and you can also add a uh, on demand static uh you know imports so that uh, your code looks much clean now and uh, let's code this particular class and then again we can do config servers dot get base url okay and import and yeah let's see whether we have anything else so guys you can you can you know skip it get base url so we we'll start get user email. See, I can edit this and you know, and then make it as a starter video. But the thing is, you want to see how I do, right? So that's the main purpose of how I do the, like, uh, you know, refactoring. So you'll get the experience, right? So that's why I'm not doing any editing at all. I'm going with the flow. I'm not preparing anything. I'm just going with the flow. Okay. Good and yeah. Yeah, that's all about it. Now our base test looks much, much clean than before, right? It was it was really clumsy. And this was one of our tasks as well, clean up base test. We've already done a lot of things, okay? Uh, just two things. One, uh, we, are, we are calling this driver factory and all that. So in our test class, you know, I, I prefer to have only test, okay? Maybe this logic, you know, of, you know, getting the driver and managing it, Okay, I don't want to maintain this here. Okay, I don't want to maintain this in our base test. Rather, I'll keep it into the uh, main class. Okay, so what I can do, I can just move this logic there. Okay, nothing else. So I'll create a class called driver uh, for now. Yeah, we can always re rename it later point of time. And uh, uh, here, let's go to the base test and we'll cut this. Come here, we'll paste it. We will also take this. We'll also paste it here okay sorry we'll create a method called a public um, static white in it driver so here we can write this logic 
So again, browser name, I want the browser name. So I can basically do string browser name. And apart from this, I can also do public uh, static void uh, quit driver. Uh, here you can do driver dot quit. Okay, and let's go to the base test. Instead of doing all that, okay, we're gonna just call these methods. Okay, so the logic is going to remain in the driver class, but in the base test we are going to call call that methods. That's it. Okay, so so it's going to be driver dot uh, quit driver, right? And here it's going to be driver dot any driver and whatever the browser name I get, okay? So that's how it is. And uh, this probably when we remove the driver that is here, it will obviously throw a lot of errors in the in the usage, right? So for now, I cannot go and edit all these things. So for time being, for time being, what I'm doing, um, maybe I leave it like that, okay? Once we explore more, uh, web driver, driver for now and I last in like this, okay. For now, because I, I don't want to manage all that. Uh, okay, it's basically returning null. So let's go here. And uh, instead of that, let's return this, okay. Return this. And again, return, right. So now all the errors will be gone. So for now, everything looks fine. Let's try to run the test and then see whether this is working fine. Okay, we have done something. So we want to make sure that it is running, right. So this is all about it guys this is how i do my coding okay um, yeah i think the browser is getting launched now so we'll you'll see more more optimization later point of time but for now yeah we're we are, we are, we are slowly progressing we have a lot of things planned i have a lot of things planned for example how to use uh, polymorphism you know because this page layer looks very clumsy uh, so yeah, i'll i'll do i'll speak about it but for now i'll finish this okay because it's almost done so i'll, I'll complete this to the task and uh, yeah let's go to the page objects and i'll show you guys how this looks like okay this is one of the class if we have a look at it okay i don't understand really what they have done here so a lot of spaces so it, these are all it's actually spoiling my readability okay uh, see what is l driver local driver what is r driver remote driver i don't know guys what is this uh, this is basically a constructor parameter. Maybe a param would be much meaningful name. What is R driver, L driver, U driver, B driver? What is this name, so guys? So, so yeah, this is how people are coding, right? So uh, even I have coded like this, uh, you know. Uh, so we'll try to optimize this, you know, much better names. You know, even see um, somewhere he's using underscore and somewhere he's not using underscore. Somewhere he's using camel casing. Somewhere uh, he's not using camel casing. Um, yeah, lot of lot of deviation. Whatever you follow, what is DRP MGR? I don't know. Drop down manager of fender. What are, I don't know. Drop down maybe, but DRP DWN is much much readable, right? RD means radio button. Maybe that's understandable. They can have it like this. Uh, there is no problem with that. But yeah, if you notice, this is doing L driver. What is L driver, guys? So it's really getting complicated, right? And then there are a lot of methods. Okay, I don't know what these methods are doing. See, set customer roles is, is not readable at all, right? So there are a lot of if conditions, a lot of else if. Yeah, this, this is all a lot of, you know, bad code. This is all the hint that your code is bad. Very, you know, you know, it's spoiling your readability, right? So, you know, setting some gender, okay? So these are all things that are quite commonly happening in, in Selenium automation. Right, we'll try to avoid this. Huh? How the, how we can optimize this set gender method? Okay, whatever the gender you pass, we want to select the radio button based on that. How we can optimize this if else conditions with with polymorphism, or how we can leverage lambda expressions and streams here? Okay, that's what we're gonna see in our upcoming classes. Okay, I'll I'll see you guys in another great video. Until then, Tata bye bye from Mozart. You all have a very good day. Bye.